So this is my um, video blog responding to a film adaptation of one of the Shakespeare plays that we're reading for class. Uh, and I'm responding to an adaptation of King Lear. Um, and the adaptation that I'm specifically interested in is Grigory Kozintsev's Korol Lear, which is a 1970... Uh, it came out in 1970 in the USSR. It came out in 1971 in the US. Uh, it's a Soviet version of the King Lear story, uh, using Boris Pasternak's translation uh, into Russian. And it's what uh, it's what Linda Hutchin, in a theory of adaptation, calls transcultural adaptation. And she notes here, um, and this is page 145 in the second edition, almost always there is an accompanying shift in the political valence from the adapted text to the transculturated adaptation. And this is really important with uh, Kozintsev's film, because in Shakespeare's text, partly, uh, partly because he had sort of pragmatic issues of he couldn't, he couldn't put a lot of people on stage, Shakespeare's play focuses very, very closely on a select group of aristocrats in England's imagined history. Kozintsev's version uh, adopts the political values of, Soviet, of uh, socialist realism, which is a specific aesthetic espousing uh, socialist revolutionary values. So what we get, and what the thing that I find most interesting about Cousin Seb's film version is the sheer number of people that are in it. Um, so Lear has a fairly small cast, but I mean, even, so you take the opening scene of Cousin Seb's film, we get an image of a peasant's feet just trudging through the dust. And then the shot backs up, we get the peasant, we get the rest, the, the peasant's family, and eventually we get a sort of large view of just a mass of peasants, like hundreds of peasants just standing on the side of this ditch, staring at Lear's castle. And um, later on in the scene, uh, in poor Tom's hut. In in Shakespeare's version, there's like four people there. There's Lear, Kent, the fool, and poor Tom. In Kozintsev's version, there's dozens of people. It's like this barn, and there's just people like lying next to one another, lying atop of one another, just crammed in together. And it's, what it does that interests me is it, so first off, it, it takes this socialist realist principle of uh, inserting the masses, making clear the role of the masses in the process of history. Um, and I argue that it's a very, this film has a very sort of Marxist conception of history, that history is linear, history is teleological, and history is the story of, the, of progress from uh, one mode of production to another. But the other thing that it does is, like Amy Cesar's A Tempest, it makes apparent, or makes obvious, something that is already implicit in Shakespeare's text. So, for Shakespeare, in Shakespeare's version of King Lear, the primary suffering that we see is the suffering of the aristocrats. We know on some level, whether consciously or not, that their suffering matters for more than just them. I mean, there's a war that goes on that just devastates this kingdom, but we don't ever see the results of 
this conflict, this civil war, in terms of the common people. There's no sort of uh, sergeant from the beginning of Macbeth who comes on and says, Oh, I'm stabbed and I'm dying, but I've got news. There's no um, Pistol and Bardola and, and all of these characters from uh, Henry V who are just sort of average guys. We don't get that in King Lear. Um, and yet we, we, we know on some level that there has to be this kind of suffering and this kind of violence. And what Kozintsev's, one of the things that Kozintsev's film does is it brings that to the fore. And it, it makes it impossible for us to think of this as a story for aristocrats. It becomes a story of uh, the national consequences of power used irresponsibly.